just do it like that. Oh, that is so cool. Today, we're gonna review the Bandit X-Trail Lite. This is a 750 watt hub drive moped style e-bike. It's got a 14.5 amp hour battery pack and 696 watt hours of energy. Good. Probably the coolest thing about this bike is how you unlock it. So you can have the whole thing lock when you step away from it and you can unlock it with either a passcode or you can use your NFC chip and unlock the screen. About to grab some food and I'm just gonna leave my bike out here. I feel particularly comfortable knowing that when you turn the bike back on, you can't just power it up and ride away on it. Now I wouldn't necessarily rely on this feature to keep your bike from getting stolen. Perfect, kept the bandits at bay. However, it is a really nice extra layer of security, so somebody can't just walk up and ride your bike off with power assistance. Now, as you can see, this is a full suspension moped style bike, and it's got some pretty decent specs, and with the step through frame, makes it pretty easy to get on. So enough chatter, let's get this thing out for a ride and see how it performs. All right, guys, going to do the hill test, 20% grade on the X-Trail Lite from Bandit. I weigh 200 pounds, full throttle, sport mode, level six, full throttle, ready to go. Not quite this amount of torque that is on the pro version of this bike. So if you're looking to climb super steep hills, you might want a little bit of a rollout, five miles an hour, and we'll put in a little bit of pedaling here on pedal assist one. And you gotta kind of pedal this one a little bit to get up the hill. There we go. Or if you're really against pedaling, you can just roll into it at about 13 miles an hour, full throttle it and you can make it up. And full disclosure, I have already reviewed the Bandit Trail Pro at the time I'm recording this video. At the time you're watching this video, the Pro review may or may not be on my channel. If it is, I'll link it down in the description. Pretty much the Pro version of this bike is a dual motor, dual battery version of this bike. More range, more power. But let's see how this bike does on eco mode. So this bike has six levels of pedal assist, starting out on pedal assist one here. The bike will take us up to about nine miles an hour with its cadence sensor. Pump it on a pedal assist too, bring us up on to about 13 miles an hour and we're already on top gear of seven. And this is a class three electric bike, meaning it will take us up to 20 miles an hour under throttle only. So normal mode, pedal assist three will take us up to 15. Pedal assist four will now give us a little more power, bringing us up to about 18 and a half, 19. And pedal assist five will bring us up to about 20. And since it is a class three electric bike, if we do throttle only, it will hold us right around 20. Cuts us off right at 20. Throttle only, not pedaling. Bump it on up to the top level, uh, sport pedal assist six. Pedal assist six will take us up to 20 and you can give it some extra power of your own to go up to 28 is what they claim we're not going to have enough uh, space here to do that the pro version has a longer bench style seat so this seat is adjustable i'll show you that in just a moment it can come up and down and also there's a little rack on this one but the big difference is that power delivery so the light version is you know the light version it just has like a 750 watt motor one single motor and one battery. So this is like the more approachable street legal version of the pro version. And looking at the list price on the website right now, this one costs about a thousand dollars less than the pro version, which is probably a good time for me to mention. I do have a discount coupon link below in the description box to get a hundred bucks off your order. If you do want to grab either this version or the pro version or any of Bandit bikes. So this is a full suspension moped style e-bike. And you guys know I love full suspension moped style e-bikes because most of your weight sits on your butt when you're riding these things and i can tell you it's making a huge difference going through this terrain off road it's a pretty decent rear suspension so let's get out on the road and see how fast we can get this up to so theoretically you can pedal up to 28 but man my legs are moving really fast so the seven gears on the shifter are tailored more for like uh, basically speeds up to about 25 miles an hour of pedaling. The list weight of this bike is 77 pounds or 35 kilograms. So this bike does weigh significantly less than the Pro version that has the two batteries and two motors. So the Bandit Pro absolutely dominated the zero to 20 acceleration. Let's see how the light version does zero to 20 acceleration. I weigh 200 pounds, sport mode, top pedal assist, throttle only, ready, go. 
much more gentle launch for sure, but brings us up to speed decently quickly. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and now it's kind of tapering off, 20. And looking at the GPS here on my left hand, we can see the speedometer is about accurate. So compared to the Pro version, this is a relatively tame beast. Of course, this one is quite a bit less expensive. Regardless of what pedal assist you have it on, the throttle will give you access to all the power and bring you up to 20 miles an hour. So rolling into a little bit more gentle hill now, the 20% grade earlier was like extreme hill climbing. This is kind of like more normal stuff. Let's just do wide open throttle here, see how it does. So 17, it's holding me right around 17.5 going up this gentle hill. Unlike the pro version of this bike, this one has an adjustable seat that you do need a wrench to raise and lower. But after you loosen it up, the whole thing will come out and you have about that much room. So if you wanted to, you could put the seat on maximum height, which looks absolutely absurd. But the main point is the seat is adjustable. I'll go ahead and bump it up just a little bit here, just to there. And now let's hop on this thing and see how the pedal assist lag is. So I don't know about you guys, but moped style e-bikes, I generally don't really pedal too much, but let's just go ahead and see what kind of lag there is. Not pedaling. Pedaling now, motor is on. Not pedaling, pedaling, motor is on. So really not too much lag. So if you are looking for a moped style e-bike that you can actually get a little bit of exercise on, setting the seat to the proper height will definitely help you get the proper leg extension. And this bike actually feels pretty decent to ride. So we're gonna go ahead and run this through the tail hefty circuit today and see how it performs on some other hill tests, what the brakes are like and what kind of range we get. But while we're here and have the opportunity, a little sand and uphill, let's see what it can do in the top pedal assist mode, riding off-road in the sand, give it a little throttle, can I make it up? Definitely takes a little bit of effort. Does not dominate like the pro version does with the two motors and two batteries. Suspension is pretty decent on this bike, just like on the pro version. Now this isn't exactly the kind of bike I'd recommend for riding downstairs, but with the full suspension, it can be done. The four inch by 20 inch tall wheels make this bike more nimble than taller tires, but also a little bit less suitable for riding off-road in the sand, which we'll try that in just a few. The grips for the handles are ergonomic and they feel like a higher quality than most bikes I review. It's got a bell. There's a headlight, a tail light, and a brake light as well. If you bump it up to sport mode, the bike's okay for some light trail riding as the name of the bike indicates. We can go through some of this sand and off-roading stuff. Full suspension definitely helps a lot. As I mentioned earlier, I'd say this rear suspension is better than a lot of the budget bikes I review. It's probably best for riding on pavement, but can do some off-road riding. Now you might be wondering, can this bike ride on the sand up by the beach? We'll find out. It's a little bit bumpy riding on the boardwalk, but again, full suspension on the rear there is helping a lot. Sport mode, we're in the top pedal assist. We'll see how it can do through the sand. Definitely not as strong as the pro version, dual motor, dual battery version of this bike, but with a little bit of pedaling, better bump it down a few gears. It'll kind of coast through the soft sit down closer to the water where the sand's a little bit more hard packed and we can just kind of cruise right along just fine. We do have fenders on the bike, so it's preventing sand from kicking up on us. And it will bring us up to 19 miles an hour. Let's see if we can make it up this hill. There is a little bit of a hill here. Come on, little motor. With a little momentum, it can do it. Uh, not the strongest hub motor for off-roading and riding in loose pack sand, but it's it's good enough to get us through. Definitely have to put a little pedaling in and shift it down to gear one. Motor on its own probably would not be doing this. But nonetheless, we did make it through. Maybe you have a hill like this in your area, you wanna ride your bike up. I'll show you what it's like. So we're in pedal assist six. Uh, I'll do throttle only, see how it does. Seven miles an hour, six, five miles an hour. It's not like in this hill. So I'll give it a little bit of pedal assist. A uh, little bit of pedal assist, and it can just kind of 
just kind of barely uh, crawl up this hill at a slow pace. If you have a lot of hills in your area, I'd recommend you go for the pro version. So after 8.4 miles and 50 minutes of riding, we have 66% on the battery. And that's with me riding this thing pretty much like a motorcycle. I have not really pedaled this thing, just pretty much pinning the throttle going about 20 miles an hour. So of course, if you do put a little bit of pedaling in and slow your pace down, you'll get more range. That's not how I ride these moped bikes. Do an official brake test here in just a moment, but first let's do the California Incline. So I do have to say the seat on this bike is particularly comfortable compared to a lot of moped style bikes I ride. It's really wide and squishy. It's a good one. Rolling into the loop-de-loop -loop here on max pedal assist. We'll give it full throttle. Let's see how it does going up the hill. Again, not the strongest hill climber. If you want a really strong hill climbing bandit, go for that dual motor, dual battery. It is making it up this relatively steep loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm going to give it a little bit of pedaling just because it feels like the right thing to do on this bike. The California Incline is a 7% grade. It's a long incline. I'm doing full throttle, top pedal assist, sport mode, and we'll just see what it can do. Uh, well, we might need to, uh, yeah. yeah, full throttle again now. So 7% grade, it's doing it. It's definitely doing it. Picking up speed, 10 miles an hour, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. So again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you want a particularly strong hill climber, I'd go for the dual motor, dual battery version of the Bandit. If you're new here, we were just down there on the bike path. So quite a decent climb. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you one thing that's particularly impressive about these Bandit bikes. And if you haven't guessed it by now, it's the brakes. So brake test from 20. I'll give the levers a decent pull. They're pretty strong, so I can't pull them all the way. Yeah. <laughs> the Bandit has 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, slotted rotors, and they are very strong. So strong that you could lock up the front tires. So you got to be careful not to grab them too hard. The levers feel nice in your hand and all you really need is like one finger to get some good braking force on these. A lot of times bikes cheap out on brakes and give you mechanical brakes, mechanical disc brakes. The Bandit does not cheap out on brakes. Brake test from 20. It's also got a little USB-C port right here to charge your cell phone, as well as a standard USB port right here. So here's my final thoughts on the Bandit X-Trail Lite. I'll leave you with my final range here in just a moment. All in all, this is a pretty decent bike. It's comfortable to ride. It's a great little commuter, easy to get on and off. Excellent brake suspension and seat is comfortable. For the price, I think it's worth the money, but I also have a discount coupon below this video in the description box. So if you do want to grab a Bandit bike, regardless of which model it is, I do have a coupon code below this video that you can use to save you some money and also help support my reviews here on this channel. After riding the dual motor, dual battery version of the X-Trail, the X-Trail Pro, it's hard to get excited about the X-Trail Lite, but this one is significantly less money. I do think this NFC unlock chip thing is pretty sweet and I haven't seen that on any other bikes yet, but we're at 54% battery after 11 miles and an hour of riding time. So let's head on home and I'll give you the final range. 27, 28. Yeah, a motor cuts you off at 28. I did 20.5 miles, almost two hours of riding time. We're at 25% battery remaining. That was with basically no pedaling and I weighed 200 pounds and I was pretty much just wide open throttle going like 20 for like a huge portion of the day. And I highly recommend you watch my Bandit X-Trail Pro review when it comes out. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment with any questions you have. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you next time.